In this video, I'm going to be talking about common bonding patterns or common bonding trends of elements that we frequently see in organic molecules. This is part two of my video series designed to help you get ready for organic chemistry. And in my first video, we talked about valence electrons and Lewis dot symbols. And at the end of that video, I came up with this nice little list of Lewis dot symbols of the elements that we most often see in our organic molecules. All I've done is taken this picture and I've just copied it onto this slide right here. So we have it for reference in this video. Now I wanna start by uh, pointing out that we are gonna be talking about bonding patterns or bonding trends for these different elements. And these are not rules. Uh, as you probably learned in Gen Chem, when we're thinking about Lewis structures and bonding and things like that, there's a lot of violations to the rules. Um, these are just, oh, again, these are just patterns or ways that we frequently see these elements bonding. Now, what I'd like to do is begin by kind of cleaning up this uh, set of, oct uh, of uh, Lewis dot symbols that we drew in the last video. So I'm gonna erase these duplicate hydrogens. We don't need to have all of them. And then uh, we've got our nitrogens. I'm gonna only use one of our nitrogen Lewis dot symbols. We don't need them both. Oxygen and sulfur, because they have the exact same Lewis dot symbol, two pairs and two uh, single electrons, I'm not gonna use both of them in the video. We're just gonna focus on oxygen, just keeping in mind that sulfur and oxygen have the same Lewis dot symbol, which means they're gonna have the same bonding patterns. And then for our halogens, let's just, uh, let's just use this generic symbol of X in the last video, I talked about how that's just our generic representation for halogens. Okay, so looking at these Lewis dot symbols, everywhere that we see a single electron all by itself, not part of a pair, so that would be a pair right there. These are single electrons, not part of the pairs. Those single electrons are used by that atom to form a covalent bond to another element. So the single electron used to form a bond and the pairs of electrons, those electrons are happy as a pair and they are not being used to form bonds. So pair of electrons, no bond pair of electrons equals no bond. So for all of these Lewis dot symbols, everywhere that you see a single electron all by itself, that is a spot where that element or that atom is going to form a bond to another atom. So for hydrogen, it just has that one single electron, which means it's just going to form one bond to another element like that. And I'm just gonna kind of represent it like that. There's gonna be some other element out here on the end and something, doesn't matter what it is. Uh, our carbon atom, that carbon atom has got those four single electrons, which means carbon atoms like to form four single bonds to four other elements like that. Um, and again, I'm just gonna kind of keep using that same representation of this little blue sphere to represent there's some other element out here on the other side of this bond. And that carbon atom forms those four single bonds. For nitrogen, because it has a lone pair, nothing's going on with those electrons. Nitrogen atoms like to form three single bonds from their three unpaired electrons. So the nitrogen's bonding pattern is gonna look something like that with elements at the end of those three bonds. For oxygen, nothing's happening with those two pairs of electrons. It's gonna form two bonds to two different elements. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of reconfigure that oxygen atom because I like the symmetry like that. And then last but not least, we have our halogens. Those halogens, they've got those three lone pairs, no bonding there. Uh, the halogens are going to form one single bond to one other element, very similar to what we see for hydrogen. This is exactly the same as what we see for hydrogen. Now, um, for the hydrogens and the halogens, all they can do is just form one single bond to one other element. That's not very exciting. The other three types of elements, these are all forming multiple bonds 
four single bonds or three single bonds or two double bonds. In addition, as you probably remember from Gen Chem, these elements are not required to form just single bonds. So this oxygen atom uh, has to form two bonds. It could form two single bonds, or if it wanted to, it could form a double bond. A double bond to one other element. That double bond is still satisfying the idea that the oxygen needs to form two bonds. It's just choosing to form both of those bonds to one single element over here, whatever that element might be. And nitrogen could do the same thing. It can form three single bonds, or if it wants, it could form one single bond and one double bond. Um, so it would only be bonding to two elements in that case. Or nitrogen, if it wanted, it could form a triple bond to one other element. And again, in all of these instances, the nitrogen atoms are still forming three bonds. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now I want to pause for a minute. You might be wondering, like, why did I choose to draw these bonds in the directions that I've chosen to draw them? Like, why didn't I draw the nitrogen's bonds like that? Why didn't I draw the nitrogen's bonds like that? Uh, remember, when it, we're drawing these at this particular point, the way that we're drawing them, nothing is, is intended to be communicated by the direction of these bonds. All that I'm trying to represent at this point is just how many single bonds, how many double bonds, how many single bonds, how many triple bonds, things like that. So don't get hung up on the direction that I'm pointing the bonds. Uh, let's go to carbon atom. Last but not least, carbon with four single bonds. It could also form two single bonds and a double bond. That is still going to count as four bonds. Carbon atoms can also form two double bonds. That also counts as one, two, three, four. And carbon atoms could form one single bond and one triple bond. That also counts as one, two, three, four. So all of this right here, this is what we refer to or what we are referring to when we talk about the common bonding patterns or the common bonding trends of the organic elements. We are going to use these common bonding patterns to help us really quickly and easily draw Lewis structures for organic molecules. And that's actually what I'm going to be doing in my next video. So check it out.